Welcome to Trending Faith here on GCU TV. My name is Ashley Romantic and let's get started with our question. What does leadership look like in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship? What do you think, Tim? Well, when you're dealing with college students, you know, um, these kind of questions are uh, constantly being asked. So how does it look like for me and my girlfriend or me and my boyfriend? And um, you see it especially this time of the year when students are kind of wrapping up the school year and you see uh, students hand in hand talking about all kinds of things when it comes to a relationship and what it's going to look like from uh, right now, what it may look like in the future. And I think a lot of times students will be tempted to project passages of scripture that are meant for a husband and a wife onto a relationship between a guy and a girl when they're dating. And there's, I think there might be some application, but for the most part, I think God intended those for husbands and wives and families. Uh, one of the curious things about Ephesians chapter 5 when it's talking about a husband and a wife and their relationship is this uh, element of mutual submission. And anybody that's ever been married knows how important it is for uh, a husband and a wife to learn how to submit to one another, to, bo to each other. And I think that's a, a wonderful trait to, uh, it, to discover in a relationship between a guy and a girl when they're dating. And, and so sometimes leadership can be viewed in kind of an overbearing way. And I think people assume, well, if, uh, if the guy is to take the leadership in the relationship, it's gonna look like this. And I think a lot of times um, guys don't have a real good idea of what leading a relationship looks like. And uh, nor do sometimes girls know, you know what uh, leading a relationship looks like. And so it's a little bit convoluted. And so I think that uh, in that dating relationship and when a guy and a girl are getting acquainted with one another and they learn how to defer and see what kind of mutual respect that they have for one another, that it says a lot about the strength of an individual when they have the ability to submit and divert, uh, defer to the person that they're dating in a really positive, affirming way. And, and I think sometimes it gets a little clumsy when we want to, and really inappropriate, when we want to treat a dating relationship much like what a marriage relationship should look like uh, or is intended to look like from a scriptural perspective, from God's, from God's perspective. So I think we sometimes uh, project a lot of principles that are meant for, meant for a certain kind of relationship between a man and a woman that uh, uh, is intended for marriage, but I don't think it's a bad thing to learn about uh, one another in a dating relationship to where we find out does this person have the ability to respect and affirm me and who I am and and it comes out in our our relation our dating relationship so I don't know leadership is uh, it's a difficult thing to apply in a dating relationship but I, I, I do think that uh, that we'll discover where somebody's values are where their uh, respect for other people um, might rest when people are dating. And so I think it's uh, something to look for, but I don't know that we should uh, assume that what God expects for a husband or for a wife should be necessarily a part of a dating relationship. So, I mean, I'm still trying to get this figured out. I've been married 30 plus <laughs> years, and I'm still you know, trying to be a good husband to my wife, and uh, we're still trying to figure out how you know, a good married life looks. and. Um, we work at it all the time. So I don't know, Jason, you may have more to, to, to speak to that issue than I do. So I, I may have less. I'm a little behind <laughs> you in terms of marriage. Yeah. I'm just, just coming up on 20 years. But, you know, as I think about what you're talking about, you're, I, I think you're right on when you say, look, the, the dating relationship is not the same as the marital relationship. So I have a 12-year-old daughter, and I've, I've made her promise she will never leave me. She will never get married. I don't think she'll honor that. So when that time rolls around and she starts to pay attention to young men, uh, I don't want her to feel that pressure of submitting to some man's leadership, some young man's leadership, who is not, in fact, her husband. There is no biblical commandment for her to do that. She needs to feel free to look for that godly spouse. That's kind of the bookends of the book of Proverbs. You're looking for that right person, that person of noble character. Uh, so I want her to, to, to spend that time thinking about, is this, is this young man actually the man God would have for me, and does this man have Christ uh, at the center of, of his world? 
Uh, so he needs to be the sort of person who doesn't err on one of the two major uh, ends of things where he's either trying to be domineering, which is what you referred to, or apathetic and irresponsible. He needs to provide a leadership that's very similar to the way Christ led the church. That's the uh, the model for, for marriage. And um, if she finds that young man, even though it'll break my heart, uh, she needs to be able to trust him and to respect him just as he should be able to love her and to put her interest before his own. And that's a very difficult th thing to find and to maintain, whether it's 30 plus years or 20 years of marriage. So uh, yeah, this is a tough question. It touches on a lot of things, but um, it's absolutely, absolutely vital to, to learn how to balance those things in any relationship, but that's a tough one. Well, anybody that has to raise daughters needs to figure this out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got two boys, and you know, it's a little bit different perspective when you're raising boys. And you want to teach them how to to lead and be the the man of the house, and you know, to be the right kind of uh, partner in a marriage relationship. Um, but when you're talking about looking at it from raising a daughter and a daughter's perspective. Uh, it's a little bit more balanced, so you'll be great at it. <laughs> my wife sometimes puts a little bit of onus on me. She says to my daughter, when you look for a husband, look for somebody like your father, to which oh, my eyebrows gosh. raise and I say, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe focus on the good things. Yeah. But but I think what she's after there is to say, look, your, your father loves you unconditionally. He has your best interests in mind. He's not serving himself in the relationship. Find that somewhere. And uh, I, I encourage her, uh, the book of Proverbs, I referred to that earlier, but the book of Proverbs ends on this really interesting passage about a very strong woman. She's not strong in a masculine way, but in a feminine way. And my daughter, I encourage her, learn how to cultivate that strength within yourself and make sure you find a young man who will love that about you and, and give you the liberty, the freedom to express that and to, to essentially compliment who he is. Anybody who's afraid of that is not going to be a good leader or a wise leader. Well, thank you, Tim and Jason. And as always, if you have a question, please feel free to send it to us at trendingfaith at gcu.edu or use the hashtag trendingfaith. <laughs>